In Batavia Public Schools, we are committed to students and their learning. And we're doing this through personalizing the learning environment and also making sure that we have students take ownership over their own learning. This is not about teaching, this is about learning. And one of the core things that we're doing is using blended learning within our classrooms. Now this isn't something new. Blended learning has been taking place in our classrooms for many years. You'll see this when teachers are meeting with small groups of students in a reading group. This is nothing new for our classrooms. But what's really changed is that technology has allowed us to really leverage the learning that takes place in a classroom and personalize it for our students. In this video, you're going to see students engaging with technology, but more importantly, their teacher. Because technology is not a solution in itself, but it allows us to leverage the systems that we have in order to make learning more personalized for our students. This puts students at the center of that learning environment. Um, I've seen more student engagement and student ownership over their learning. Um, they're driving the bus a lot of the time and making decisions for what they want to learn, which is causing the engagement to be exciting for me. Um, I'm not standing in front of the classroom anymore just for long periods of time with all these eyeballs looking at me with little sponges. It seems like they're more um, apt to be learning something with me individually or in a small group, and there's just a lot more collaboration, which has just allowed for um, just kind of a renewed excitement for me as a teacher. I like working in stations because then we get to have different options of what we want to do and I like deciding what I like to do. We decided to incorporate blended learning into our classroom because we saw a need to reach learners at so many different levels and especially with the focus more going towards the growth mindset and um, goal setting. We wanted to make sure if you teach one lesson to the whole class you're reaching just those kids right in the middle and we wanted to make sure that we could um, reach kids in a small group um, that may be below what, we're, what is the first grade curriculum and then also those kids who already have mastered the first grade curriculum we want to make sure we look at where they are and take them to the next step. And then not only what are we doing in our small group, but we wanted to look at, well, what are kids doing when they're not with us then? And we want to make sure they're not doing, they're not just biding their time waiting to come and see the teacher, but that they're doing meaningful practice and that they have some accountability and some um, choice in how they can work towards their goals when they're not with the teacher. The students are really reacting to the blended learning model. I think they're, um, higher level engagement, I'm seeing more collaboration with each other, more excitement for generating new topics. So they might be learning something in math that they're sharing out with the class and then another student might be like, I want to learn that, can you coach me along with, with what you're doing? And um, they'll post little challenges for each other about what they're doing with technology programs like Front Row or IXL and, you know, I'm at level this or have you tried learning this, I can teach you how to do it. And that's. That's been exciting for me. It's no longer just, you know, I'm doing only the second grade standards, but we're pushing the envelope into higher levels of standards too for them. What I like most about blended learning is that you can go at your own pace at any speed you want, and you can it teaches you how to prioritize things. Like, if you have a thing that's due tomorrow, you should probably get that done first versus three days from now. Even if the thing that you do tomorrow, you really don't want to do. I took on the challenge of using blended learning this year because really the student ownership part spoke to me the most. Uh, we've already been doing goal setting in the classroom, but what I found was the students were doing the work because I asked them to do the work. They were doing the learning because I asked them to do the learning. And it's so much of it revolved around me. And ultimately, it's, it's not about me at all. And it's about the student ownership and the students owning their learning. And that's what I love the most about the blended learning model is the student ownership. And they're setting their own goals. They're tracking their own progress and monitoring their own learning. And it comes down to their learning because they want to. Um. 
so until I had learned about it myself, I was a doubter on it. And, eh, crazy that you know that they need the structure, they need to be told how to get things done. Once I learned more about blended learning, saw it in action, I realized you know maybe learning how it's done is going to help them more than me telling them how it's done. I think in a lot of my older classes that didn't use this, I would get bored if it was an easy subject. And with this, I can control the pace, which is really nice. And like, even if I am racing through a subject, there's other people that aren't, that can always go back and get more teacher time than they would if we didn't use blended learning. I've always noticed that my students, my highest students, always um, were finishing things really quickly and then would kind of sit and wait and my lowest students would struggle to finish at all or they would just kind of give up on a question. Um, so I thought this was a good opportunity for my students to be at their own pace but end up at the same spot with additional help. I feel like I, I interact with my students on a much more personal level and I'm able to help them a lot more because of the fact that I'm not trying to help 30 of them at once. It's only between one and I mean even five at once. I, we're mostly a data-driven district. I have noticed that our test scores um, for my students have increased um, in comparison to other semesters, which is a, awesome, I think. And um, otherwise, the collaboration between students, it's been really fun to see when they're working in their groups together when they, I would think in the past, when they would have immediately ran to me to get help or to ask something, but it's been really cool to see them going to each other and even to other groups going, hey, did you get this technology function to work? Can you help me out? And they explain it and then it's just been really cool to see the, the responsibility level in them, really their ownership of this learning is really just taking charge. There's a wonderful relaxed atmosphere to the class that I haven't seen in, in a long time, um, especially with my honor students. Oftentimes, your honors groups are kind of high-strung folk, and the kids are often very pressure and you're kind of. And I'm not seeing that with this group. So that might be the success: is that they're, they're they are being successful without the pressure that they kind of put on themselves, and that that's got to be a good thing. It will seem like you're not learning anything because she's not directly telling you. But if you really look through it, you realize that you know all these new things. That was kind of a surprise when I first started. I was like, oh, she's not telling us anything. And then I'm just like, oh, now I know all these new things about carbohydrates. Students, I think at first, um, it you have to make it seem, you have to make it relevant to them, I think, and, and tap into their own motivation because it is difficult. They're asked to do a lot of work and do a lot of work on their own or with a partner or with a group. And um, sometimes it may be easier to sit there and have me tell you all the answers. But they, um, their reaction to it, I think the more, the, the clarity and giving them the resources and making sure they understand what they're doing and when they're doing it and why they're doing it um, has been has been huge for them. They I see a huge difference in the sixth graders um, and and what they can do. And I also notice that I can't say they can't do something until I try it with them because they've shocked me more than once with what they're able to do and what they're capable of, um, especially with the technology. They 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 can do it. I think it's different because of how we do rotations, like a lot of classrooms a teacher just stands up there and talks, but it's different because you get to choose what you really want to do and what fits you best. The students get to really take ownership and choose what works best for them. So if one day they don't get a concept and then the, the next day they do, they're not in the same group and they feel like they can take off. So they yeah. start taking more ownership in their learning and want to do more. They participate more. They are engaged more. They're raising their hands, um, which, you know, sometimes you don't typically see when people are struggling, they don't raise their hand because they're scared of answering the question. In this classroom, we celebrate those, um, those wrong answers and then we talk about how to fix them. So they don't ever feel that they're any different just because they don't get it. Um, everyone's always struggling at some point and so these learners um, really are engaged and take ownership in that.
this program was set up uh, with a blended learning model in mind um, because a traditional classroom didn't just quite work for some of these students. My classroom's kind of a, uh, a different character. Um, I'm teaching an alternative learning opportunities program, so most of my uh, classes are online. And I have multiple students doing multiple classes at the same time. So I may have a student doing American Lit, another student doing American History, one doing um, a math class, something like that. Um, and by having a blended learning model, it gives me and the students a versatility to uh, look at more into their curricular needs and help them ac accomplish their academic needs, uh, both inside school and outside school, because if I know that they're not going to be here, I strongly encourage them to, to work on their lessons at home and they have the ability to do so.